our fans. Our fans were were off the charts. I mean, it was it was deafening in there. It was extremely loud, and uh, so you got to take your hat off to them because they brought it. They brought it for us tonight, and you can feel the energy. My son uh, Elijah told me when he got to the building, he he texted me right before the game. He said, "Dad." The energy in the in the air is unbelievable, and this is before tip off. So, you know, I applaud our fans. Uh, we're going to need them. To, we're going to need them to continue to be there for us night in, night out, uh, because uh, it's not easy. It's a long journey, and we just got to keep taking it one step at a time. And we need everyone behind us in Sacramento, which I feel we definitely have. Uh, I thought, uh, you know, our guys, uh, they, they competed. They stayed poised, especially when we went down. Uh, you know, Golden State, again, they're, they're champions. Uh, and, you know, you're going to have to try to take this from them. You know, it's not going to be easy. They're good. They're going to go on runs. We may go on runs. And uh, <clears throat> we have to stay the course and, until that buzzer sounds at the end of the game. So for our guys to to do that, even when we were down, uh, was fantastic. Uh, obviously, uh, Foxy and uh, and uh, uh, Malik were terrific for us. You know, they both hit the record books for playoff debuts. Obviously, Malik coming off the bench and his point production for a playoff debut, and Foxy, uh, you know, obviously starting and him having a playoff debut. They, they, were, they were big for us, especially when we couldn't get a bucket. Uh, during the course of the game, and that's what you need. You need guys to uh, to step up, uh, especially you need uh, your all stars like Foxy did tonight. He was he was absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, our, I thought our physicality on both ends of the floor was good. Uh, our pace was good in the second half. We ended up scoring 10 fast break points in the second half, which was a huge difference than what we had in the first when we only had two. And you know. Again, I'm going to be preaching that the whole playoff run, uh, physicality, pace, pace, physicality, not just in the full court, but in the half court too, and physicality, not just defensively, but offensively as well. Um, and speaking of offense, I thought our sprays changed the game. We did a better job in the second half of touching that paint and finding guys on the perimeter. We had a lot of guys hit some big shots for us. Uh, but I, I, I also have to give credit to the rest of our bench uh, <clears throat> our bench was was really good. Davion, Trey, and Alex. I already talked about Malik, but those three guys were were, were really really good for us in a lot of different ways. Uh, it's one game. Obviously, we'll take it, but it's uh, we understand that this is a long journey. Coach, uh, congratulations. Sounds like maybe some country music and Modelo are in order tonight. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> what can you share with us about the way you defended? Steph, Steph didn't get a very good look there. I know it was a very short clock. But what can you share about the way you defended their last shot and where that broke down for them? Well, I mean, he, you know, he's capable of making any shot. and You just kind of hold your breath until that thing bounces off the rim. You know, it's no secret we wanted to take away the three-point line, and that's what we tried to do. But in the same breath, he's so crafty that once he faced up, you know, you had to try to contest but not to do it where you're picking up a foul because if you foul him in that situation, we all know he's making all three free throws. He's about as good a free throw shooter in the history of the game as anyone. So, um, you know, again, we, we guarded the three-point line. We did a fairly good job with it. He ended up breaking free at the last second. He had to rush taking that one foot three point shot, which at the end of the day, you got to live with as opposed to fouling him. Mike, uh, Matt George, UBC 10. Over the course of the season, a couple times you talked about you can't always call timeouts to uh, regather the group. You need them to do it yourself. How pleased are you with how they responded to Steph and Clay's kind of big shots in the fourth quarter to make sure things didn't get out of control? No, you, you know, I, I'm excited. Uh, it, we we had an extra time out to burn, and, you know, it was I, I was close, you know, not just to stem the tide a little bit, but I, th I thought, uh, you know, our guys would, especially Foxy, because we ran them, would need, some, some, need a quick blow, uh, but we kept, you know, mixing in stops with big threes that they hit, and we were we were pushing it. And I did not want to um, hinder our pace at all, and that's why I didn't burn. That's why I didn't use extra time out because I thought every time we got it off the glass, and even after the makes, we were trying to get it up the floor, and I didn't want to take that away from them because that's how we're going to have to play throughout our playoff run.
uh, James Hamm, ESPN 1320. Mike, um, we've talked about it all season long with you. You started early in preseason talking about how De'Aaron has to be a two-way player for you guys. Yeah. Uh, the 38 points was nice, but his defense tonight was probably some of the best we've seen in his career. Just uh, like what has gone into that, making him that type of defender? Well, first of all, he's embraced it. He knows that he has to be able to do that in order for us to attain or achieve our goal. He's got to be a two-way player uh, if he expects at all at any time to win a championship, and he's got to do it at a high level. He was really good tonight. You know, we, we try to give him a rest from time to time uh, by throwing Davion in the game and, and letting Davion uh, uh, chase uh, Steph around. We also mixed in a little bit of zone and boxing one, and we're going to have to keep trying to mix it up you know, throughout the course of the game. But he's going to have to be not only elite for us offensively, uh, but elite defensively. And <clears throat> that's what an all-star does. That's what a first, second, third team all-NBA player does. <clears throat> they rise to the moment, especially when the moment's really big. Like we, we, know, we know Malik right here. Oh. We, know, we know Malik's got a big personality, and, and when he plays, he's always aggressive and um, getting his shots up. But to see what he did tonight... Um, well, just what did you make of, of that, particularly in his, in his playoff debut? And, and how much does his personality rub off on his teammates when, when he is encouraging guys, and particularly guys off the bench, to do what they do? Malik is, is a confident individual, and you can feel that when you're around him. And, you know, I, I told him there were a couple of times where I thought he touched that paint, and he had a couple of sprays in the first half. And I told him, I said, Malik, I said, I'm not trying to call you off your shot. I'm going to live with you shooting the ball. But when you touch that paint, if you can feel it, we got guys wide open on the perimeter because they're either A, trying to blitz you, or B, uh, and so they're sending two at you, or B, they're sending a second, sometimes a third body when you hit that paint. I said, now, again, I know you, I know you can score. And if you don't agree with what I'm saying, you do what you want to do, and we're going to live with it. And, you know, you could feel Malik's confidence, and we need that in games like this because he ain't, he ain't afraid of me, <laughs> and he ain't afraid of the moment, which is what we need. Good job. Steph Curry got a